Hello everyone, we're going to check out the new versions of Quen Image Edit. This is the image editing AI model we've talked about in previous videos. Quen created these AI models especially for macro editing, and they're really good at it. This latest version is called Quen Image Edit 2509. It's been improved for better coherence, and it now supports control net pose. It's also able to do super precise object transfer, even with multiple objects. It's not just focusing on one object and doing a tiny bit of editing. Instead, it can handle up to three objects from your input image, combining scenes, people, and more into one newly generated AI image. As mentioned here, it supports multi-image editing, like person plus person, person plus product, or person plus scenes, all blended together into a fresh AI-generated image. Plus, the consistency of object style referencing is way better than in previous versions. We're going to check out some real world scenarios where you can use this image editing model to create images. One practical way to use it is in Comfy UI. Of course, it's super convenient. You can download the model files directly from the Comfy UI Hugging Face repo. That Hugging Face page is packed with Quen Image Edit AI models, and inside there's a Diffusion Models subfolder. You'll want to save those files into your Comfy UI Models Diffusion Models folder. That's where the image generation model files go. As you can see, there's an Image Edit 2509, the latest version, with both BF16 and FP8 formats. And if you've got less VRAM or can't handle the 20 GB or 40 GB file sizes, you can even try the smaller versions using GGUF quantization. There are Q2 up to Q8 quantized models. So here, as you can see, I've got some videos here, but of course today we're not focusing on AI videos. I'm just showing you that we can take one image like this and generate the same character in a different pose like this. We can even change their position, like going from standing up to sitting down without messing with the environment or background too much. It's a very basic motion. Start frame, end frame, generated like this. And these images were made using Quen Image Edit with the workflow we're going to play around with today. This workflow is based on the template from the latest Comfy UI update. So if you want to try the newest Quen Image Edit version, make sure you've updated Comfy UI to the latest version. Then, go to Browse Templates in the top menu bar. You'll see an Image tab. Inside that tab, you'll find Quen Image Edit 2509. Click it and it'll prompt you to download the required models and files if you don't already have them. Since I've got mine saved under different folder names, I can just manually select them here. This is basically the simple basic version of what I just showed you with Quen Image Edit. As you can see, there are three load image inputs. Let's say, for example, I've got a previous example ready. I want to do a virtual try-on for a character, like for an e-commerce store. I've got this necklace I want to showcase on a model. The way we do it is by using a text prompt, something like, put the small size necklace on the woman and she's sitting at a dining table, camera zoomed out. That way we're not just getting a boring white background, we're creating a lifestyle style scene. Once you hit generate, it'll start loading. You get a new image with the character wearing the necklace sitting at the dining table, just like we described and the style of the original image is nicely replicated in the new one. That's one example of how this updated AI model can be used, just like shown here. You can also use DW pose. For instance, you can feed a DW pose image into the third input slot. As you can see, there are three image inputs, and you can use one of them, like image three, for DW pose, just like in the hugging face examples. So in this case, I'm using a DW pose as image 3, and I connect it to the positive and negative text encoder nodes. Then, I load another image as the reference pose, the pose I want the character to take. In this example, the third image defines the pose, and the generated image follows it exactly. Same character, same necklace, but now in a more dynamic pose, instead of just sitting straight up like before. And I didn't even change the text prompt, just added the DW pose input. Next, let's try multiple try-ons. Say I've got a dress and some other garments laid out in one image like this. In this case, I don't need DW pose. 
I'm only using two images. You can use text prompts with Quen Image Edit by referencing Image 1 and Image 2. Image 1 is your base character. It's connected all the way through the workflow. Image 2 is the garment reference. Think of Image 1 and Image 2 like tags in your prompt. For example, I wrote, Put Image 2, the garments on Image 1. The woman is at a Christmas party, holding a glass of wine. The rest of the prompt describes the background and action, exactly what I want, and look at the result. It puts the dress and tank top on the character in a festive, lifelike setting, not just a plain studio shot. This kind of virtual try-on used to be way harder. Last year with frameworks like Flux, you had to do tons of masking, create separate pose references, and stitch everything together in multiple steps. But now, with Quen Image Edit, you can do all that in one simple workflow. That's how fast AI is moving these days. I tried another set of garments, and it worked just as well. Even with two layers, like a dress and a sweater. It replicated both from the reference image perfectly. Here's another example. This one shows person plus scenes. I used a sports car as the background scene, with the same character. The result? She's standing right beside the McLaren, just like in my reference. It's the same example shown on the Hugging Face page. Woman next to a sports car, consistent character, consistent scene. And of course, you can also treat the car as an object and place it into a totally different scene. For instance, I described, A stylish woman in a black shirt and jeans is standing beside a green sports car, but in a new environment. And it worked though sometimes the object scale isn't quite what you'd expect, like the car might come out too small. In those cases, you can either generate a few more times or add more detail to your prompt, like specifying the character's position relative to the car. But overall, it handles instructions really well and keeps the subjects consistent when transferring them into new images, just like in the person plus product or person plus scene examples. Imagine that sports car is your product. You can place them next to a car, a bag, or any product in any lifestyle setting. For example, here's a perfume try-on. I prompted, the woman wearing the same outfit is holding a small bottle of perfume and spraying it on herself in a bedroom makeup area. If you want to keep editing that image afterward, here's a handy trick. Copy it to your clipboard, Right-click the first image node and paste it in. Now that image is loaded directly into the workflow. From there, you can do another edit. No need for the other two reference images. Say you want to change her black t-shirt to light pink. Just update the prompt. Change the t-shirt to light pink. And just like that, you get a slightly modified image with the new color, like color changes, without redoing the whole image. Here's another person plus scene example. This workflow is super flexible. You can input multiple reference images. In this case, image one is John Wick and image two is a nightclub scene, dance floor, crowd jumping, and dancing. The prompt was, image one, the man is holding a pistol and walking into image two's dance floor moving through a crowd of people. And the result? It generated something that feels like a movie scene, but in a totally new setting just like I wanted. Remember that AI video I showed at the start with start and end frames? Let's save this John Wick image for later use in video generation. I'll copy it and paste it into the reference image node. Now, I don't need image two anymore. I can bypass it. Let's treat this as the start frame. Then I'll generate an end frame with a simple motion. John Wick raising his pistol, pointing it at a target. The man is holding up the pistol, pointing at another guy, camera at a 45 degree angle. And there it is, exactly what I wanted. Now we've got a start frame like this, and an end frame like this. A simple motion, ready to plug into 2.2 start and end frame video workflow. Once both images are ready, you can generate a short video clip. It's a fun way to combine Quen image edit with AI video models. You get full control over the character's pose, the environment, and even add cinematic prompts in the video model for more dynamic scenes. For example, I tweaked the prompt a bit, and here's the result. The motion is simple, 
and frame interpolation smooth out the transitions really nicely. So yeah, using two images from QuenImageEdit, we built a scene with character and background, generated a start and end frame, and turned it into a video clip. Pretty cool. Quen Image Edit isn't just for basic edits. It opens up tons of creative possibilities. You can dream up all kinds of ideas and bring them to life with this AI. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.